Today, Monday, 5 February 2024, is a little bit of a quieter day at the 2024 World Aquatics Championships, per the results that I'm thinking of reporting on. So, which might be one result, we'll see. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I was like, I have some other, I have some other races that, from the past, before this, this competition that's ongoing, uh, two, not two, sorry, eight, no, I was right the first time. 2 February 2024 to 18 February 2024 in Doha, Qatar. So that's the 2024 World Aquatics Championships. So this is going to be filling in the past um, races that have happened in the past. So this is my take on the Vladimir Morozov 50 meter breaststroke. Uh, 25.51 seconds from 4 December 2019. And I have been to the region in which he achieved this time, which is in Scotland. Uh, so we'll, here I talk through the Vladimir Morozov 50 meter breaststroke race at the 2019 European Swimming Championships, different than European Aquatics Championships, European Swimming, Cham Cham Swimming Championships, in Glasgow, Glasgow, Scotland, United Kingdom, time of 25.51 seconds in the final um, on Wednesday for December 2019. With his time, he achieved a personal best time, a championships record, and a European record. I provide my take slash perspective on his performance and cont contextualize it in terms of headlines when representing a certain region in competition. So this was a relatively somehow, so when I said I started following Kyle Chalmers in 2018, um, this happened in 2019. So this is actually one that I saw happen and I remember being like, how confused is that? Wow. Or close to it happening. Alright, this is a... Yes, but there was build-up here. In the sense of... Oh, and who am I? I am Tannis Corley Leonardi, and this is my YouTube channel, Tannis Leonardi. Some people saw it coming, some people didn't see it coming. There was more, like, f from the American side of things. Kind of, oof, you know. Um, but it was a good time. It's still a good time and not like a party, like, I don't, I, um, <laughs> kind of thing. And so it makes me, that combined with the, in the United States of America, I live in the northern Seattle area, northern suburbs of Seattle, oh, Washington State, United States of America, and yesterday were the music Grammys and we have a music artist from here, Brandy Carlisle. And there was a headline and it was homegrown and then kind of like a little descriptive blurb. And that's the front page of the Seattle Times. And that was yesterday's newspaper before the Grammys happened. And they tend to do that with her. Um, she's been around for a while. <laughs> um, and so she gets a headline kind of, and if you think of like, oh, an award ceremony is going in, whether they, achieve a certain time or not in a race and right she gets um, right, her, her herself on the front page of the Seattle Times kind of thing. So um, I, was, I was like this race did not do that. I think Megan Kwan and Nathan Adrian. All right, the Seattle is um, in terms of the ones that matter that get covered it's the we'd probably say Washington State because like Nathan and Adrian is from Kitsap County, which is across the PJ Sound, but still kind of Seattle area um, and that kind of thing. So they they got coverage and I, I, and I remember going, Megan Kwan was like going to the Olympic Games and I was, you know, eight years old and swimming and stuff. And so they'd have a special on her in the sports section, I think. I think it was sports section though, um, like in how she trained and stuff. And so, what would mine be? The Brandy Carlisle thing. Let's say I'm out there in road running. I don't, in, uh, let's say I was running representing Norway. How would it be phrased to properly attribute, like, that you know the bulk of my well okay the 
either all or all but like, you know, three days of my childhood were here in Seattle. So instead of homegrown, how about Seattle child? I was like, and with this kind of casing, and then running, so she chose, I'm gonna guess the person might get a say, I don't think it always puts the name um, of the person, running for a region, she grew up in. I think that has less letters than the little sub hub, homegrown blurb they had for Brandy Carlo. So maybe that would be the headline. In whatever um, competition I'm going for, or record, or a record that was attained, right? It's a little bit different between um, running and swimming. And I like this because I think it accurately encapsulates right? Doris Brown. Heritage and my aunt both ran in this region. region. Think of it as like the Puget Sound area kind of thing. Um, and so in that sense, it's, there's very much a, even if I run representing Norway or Scotland or Hungary or who, whoever, um, that the origins of my running from like m me with myself as coach and running in school and the legacy or a legacy that I'm carrying on might not be the only one, um, is a Seattle one. I'm a Seattle area and emphasize that. Emphasize that with region. Um, and then if I, and then it's a kind of a cool one because it allows for, okay, so there's the meaning of it. But if there were also, let's say, I had Under Armour clothing and Brooks shoes or Brooks everything or something, right? Then there's, and Brooks is still headquartered in Seattle and the shoes are still designed in Seattle or something, the how um, I run for the region can change. I don't know if this would be a repeated thing, right? I'd be, I would be okay with that, right? Like, you know, each time I achieve a world record kind of thing. Yeah, right, but then it becomes a, um, I, and I like this approach because it, it brings up a, well, if there was more than one of me out there from represent running for a region, it could be they, right? Or like it, it's it's something that doesn't have to be unique to me, kind of thing, and doesn't it allows people to turn to the article and see if they want to remember my name, kind of thing. Whereas I think the symbolic meaning of what I'm doing could matter more. Yeah, I think with Vladimir Morozov, this one really came to mind because it was. Um, I think there was, with some of the other swimmers in breaststroke, and especially if somebody goes out and sets a bunch of world records in a race, there's like, where's the competition? And he came in, like, stealth mode and set this record, or set of records, you know, kind of thing. Um, and it was like, swimming for, you know, Russia child, swimming for a region he grew up in, kind of thing. Yeah, like... Um, it's, it's, it's something people outside of the sport of running can understand. All right. And this is something, um, people outside the sport of swimming, right? Retired in 2010, uh, can understand, right? Is this was a very, very meaningful swim in terms of the pipeline isn't broken. Just sometimes the people who are good at the stroke don't swim it all the time. I thought that was a good one. So that's what I took away from my take, or that was what I took away. So my take on the Vladimir Morozov 50 meter breaststroke, 25.51 seconds for December 2019.